everybody and welcome again to another episode of Ljubljana Talks coming live from IMEX 2024 and here today with Goras Chad we have another amazing guest with whom we're going to be spending the next half an hour, Kolja Dams from Vogue Dams. Thank you very much for coming. Finally we succeeded in capturing you live on our show. And um, the first question, I actually told you about this one before, so you had the most amazing studio during COVID from which we saw you, you know, making your comments and projections. Is that studio still there? Yeah. First, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for having me. Yes, the studio is still there and I'm still using it up to date. Um, I'm kind of a technical geek, so I end up um, optimizing it. And now we have a few of these studios in our offices. Kolek, could you tell us a little bit more about you? Because the amazing story of your agency is something what the colleagues need to learn more about. So just a little bit words about the agency yourself. Yeah, history. Now, um, let's go into history. I'm actually, we have to take it back. It's a family business. My father founded the agency 50 years ago and um, I took it over in 97. And um, I was basically born into this industry. So even as a kid, I spent most of my time at trade shows, at events. But we started out actually with media production. There was a time before video became popular. We started out with slide projections where you could project on amazing large screens and this is what my father as a professional photographer started out and then all the rest of the event stuff came to it over the years. This kind of explains your love for the tech in a way. Um, you are, I can easily say, one of the opinion leaders when it comes to the, our industry and uh, the content that you share on LinkedIn especially is really, really, I can just say great. And would you tell us what do you see as the main trends happening in our industry in 2024? Oh, thank you. I do believe the main trends right now, and it's not a trend, it is ongoing. First, it is um, sustainability. Sustainability is the most important movement we have to get into. And therefore, sustainability, also driven by the European Union, which is forcing in documentation, in um, making sure that even events are sustainable, I do believe there is no option not to focus on sustainability. Then I am still um, I'm still a fan of hybrid events. I do believe hybrid events with the Google Glasses coming out and evolving more will be um, in, in these parts and really picking up in the next years. And of course, there's lots of technical stuff, AI coming and continuing that I believe we have to focus and we'll see new stuff um, ever since. Coming back to the first question I, I raised, was it difficult to, to step into the father's shoes when you took over the company? It was, um, but I was extremely um, thankful to my father who also at a certain time then just said I'll step back and I'll let you do it and um, what really helped that we created what we today call agile event management so a very on eye level iterative process in um, getting further and getting ahead and this is extremely helpful. I'm a big fan of, of, of your, your agile approach. I would say maybe even because of that you survived uh, uh, the corona crisis untouched, uh, I would say. But can you explain to everybody what is that actually, in a simple word so that they will understand. What is agile approach, approach in event organization? So the agile approach is not new. It has been around for like 25 years, especially coming out of the software development. 
Because in software development 25 years ago, there were lots of issues that programs were not being finished because when you started writing down the brief and you started to program and a few weeks, months later, everything changed. So therefore, the agile approach in event management is the same thing, that you're not going into a task and then following a waterfall task as you remember in the old days, but you rethink in every concept, in every part what you're doing and discuss it on eye level, open with everyone else in the process. Let's take, for example, one simple example on agile event management. In the old days, the client sent out a brief the agency had like three weeks to work on it and then came back with um, a solution. And then this was discussed and then you had another two, three weeks to revise it. Today, when you have an agile approach and the client says, let's go to Frankfurt and we're going to Frankfurt and but the set date in Frankfurt has an issue because there's a big trade show coming on and everything is super expensive. We would stop right there and discuss with the client, of course, we can now look further into Frankfurt, but were you aware? Let's discuss how we do about this or let's take a different um, destination instead of spending lots of time into something that goes into the trash afterwards. So does, does believing in an agile approach, does that actually affect your company culture and actually the organization? It does, because it doesn't, um, in the old days, there was one management person picking out the tasks and giving them to people and then overseeing the fulfillment of the task. Now, in the agile approach, it's the other way around. Um, everything that comes in, like also RFPs, go into a, f um, a funnel and then everyone can pick and choose what they want to work on and um, in these parts. Of course, it's a learning process and it is a process that we also still have to get better and better at, but it's a huge difference also in culture if someone tells you to do something or you picked it yourself. It's a, it's a very big break to the typical top-down kind of management system. And how many employees are now with Fogdams? Um, it's different. <laughs> I can honestly don't even answer um, this question. In Germany, we are probably 150 worldwide. I don't know as uh, present, but especially markets like China are picking up very mm. much because we are one of the few Western agencies left in China. So with offices in Beijing, Shanghai and Hong Kong, uh, um, we are very... We're having very much fun with exciting oh, I, projects. Uh, I, I think that's a beautiful word to, to choose. So how does digitalization help you with this structure? How do you use digitalization in this way? I believe digitalization has always been there and is not only now just changing about AI, but has always been there. And this was for me also the first move into the industry, coming actually from guest management um, into the industry where I had the opportunity to really um, rethink workflows and processes. So I believe without technical support in event tech, but also moving it on the next level to mart marketing technologies is absolutely key right now. Um, I need to ask you something uh, about the pitching process here in Germany. Well, we have we see a lot of differences during between the countries in Europe. Is this is this process well structured in Germany in a way that I don't know they do not invite tons of agencies to a pitch or that they repay your work, hard work you, you invest into a pitching, how it is actually in Germany? It, again, I can only speak for us or um, for a situation post-COVID, so that may change. Right now, we are not pitching um, a lot because um, there is so much business out there and so many companies are looking for agencies to help them business that we unfortunately can also 
only answer um, a fraction of all the RFPs coming in. But we do have an internal law that we only take part in a pitch if the pitch is compensated and um, um, the client is paying for the pitch process. This is good to know. This is a good practice, I would say. Eh? Uh, well, as you know, the new European legislation is forcing, at this moment, 50,000 European companies to report uh, according to SRA st standards and uh, how, what is your, how do you address this, this challenge actually? And we are coming back to sustainability. We are running around that in the circles uh, this, this, this whole day actually. Um, during the pandemic, we basically split up in two teams. We had the team sustainability and the team digital. And this is what we focused up on. So we are now ISO 2121 um, certified. And I believe this is a good starting um, point to help companies fulfill their needs and requirements. And um, I do... Uh, we do get a lot of requests just for measurement. What I would be wishing for that we are taking it a step further, not just focusing on measurement, but really moving it a step further in these parts. I mean, when we talk about events, um, do you see that uh, it's something that also we touched upon with Gorast on quite a few of our talks with different people. Do you see that there are more and more events created and do you see that there if there's a problem with this there are as more a trend and more events. events there's more and more new events being ah, okay. created I do I do see from our clients our clients do less events than pre-covid but invest much more money for every single event. So we do also sometimes um, for our clients um, question their guests or their potential guests. So how many business events will you be visiting in 2025? And the um, number is down. So when uh, um, like trade shows, conferences, people said, I'm going to visit um, two to three when it was five to seven pre-COVID. Therefore, it's more important for you to really focus on the event um, that um, you as a brand are inviting to, that people are coming to you. So we see rising budgets for events, but less events um, than in the past. If you ch check readers, if you, or if, you, if you check the portfolio of Dams on the website, you will see amazing creative works there, you know. So you are definitely part of creative uh, lack of the industry. But we have also logistical part. Is there a kind of symbiosis between logistical and creative part or there is a war going on? And yeah, another question is, is it true that if we meet, we change the world? As the MPI was uh, saying a long time ago, actually. Yeah, we do. I believe um, also talking of AI, AI will drive to more live events because you cannot fake events. And what we're doing right now, speaking in person, broadcasted, but speaking in person has an enormous value. And the more digital we get, the higher this value is. And therefore, I do believe in the future, this comes together and creativity, technology, um, um, logistics have to go hand in hand and underlying is the key objective of the event and sustainability because therefore it makes sense if you rethink stuff from the beginning um, it's extremely helpful also on your overall CO2 footprint. It's a very interesting uh, concept of what you said and I, I I think we all agree that we want to spend our time more efficiently, not just spend it. We, we became more aware of the value of time perhaps after COVID. So I completely agree with you that we would be more picky when which event we would be attending and which not. There is another trend that we are noticing, especially in Europe, and that is that companies are basically saying to their employees, um, you know, you should only travel once or twice or, you know, there's a limited carbon budget that they are given. Do you see this with your clients as well? We do. So therefore, um, um, when someone is investing the money to travel to an event, the event better be good. And good does not necessarily mean high budget, but what we see in one of... Um, 
the hardest things for our clients and the agencies is give the attendees time to really have these serendipity moments where you meet other people and take something out of a conversation we just had. For example, we just talked about a um, um, someone from France living Jubiljana and coming back after years, seeing the development. That's something that will resonate with me and is something that is transforming myself. And I believe this is all, it's not just about experience. So we're moving into a, a transformation experience here. So to achieve transformation, I imagine there would be on a corporate level, certain KPIs. Do you see that there are KPIs being put down as a part uh, from the side of the client saying, these are the KPIs our employees have to chase at that event? What would those be? I believe um, um, this is a question I cannot answer, but the, um, um, we believe in data-driven event management mm -hmm. and every event has to start with a simple question. The question is, what are the attendees supposed to be doing after the event? So what are they supposed to be doing? What are they supposed to be doing differently? And this is the most important question to ask. And then after you ask this question, you have to follow up with another question. Why aren't they doing it now without the event? To really double check, can the event move into this change of decision and um, then you break it down into KPIs and um, I believe this is where the KPIs are coming from. A KPI that everyone has to talk to everyone or everyone has to watch a screen at least 45 seconds is not a KPI. You um, in, in a lot of cases honestly we're right now measuring atmosphere level how was the food how was the transportation how so we're so waiting time yeah, yeah. yeah right. but they have zero relevance they do have some relevance on creating a bottom line but they don't have the relevance on the classical roi coming back to more i would say hardcore things when you are choosing your destination what is your number one criteria uh, how can destination convince you to bring, for example, one automotive event to, to the place? Yeah, talking of destination, we came up with an AI tool calculating the CO2 footprint for everyone attending. And I do know, I've had discussions about it. it's difficult for destinations that are not in centers. And a destination like Frankfurt um, wins a lot of times because um, they have very direct flights and um, um, CO2 friendly train rides here. Um, but then a lot of clients say, okay but we've been to Frankfurt a few times let's do something else but the first step we're taking is calculating on CO2 emissions and travel times what would be the ideal destination to do the event I will just say bravo you are the first one doing that and this is where the change will start for sure I mean this is super important we can talk for hours about sustainability but this is a true actually added value when when you do this in, in that way so when you have a decision process in in, in, in making in, in your agency who has the final word uh, about the creativity creative part of the of the design of the project is it you or your colleagues, how it works. No, no, we no. talked about an agile approach, right. of course. This is a provocation, of course. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Um, no, the team decides. So um, no one is going to ask me. So <laughs> this is the agile approach, yes. But when looking at creativity, how do you perceive creativity and how do you measure which of, let's say, ideas you will actually pitch at the end of the day? What would be your, what would be your criteria, in a way, of saying this is what also kind of represents Vogue Dams and it would be, let's say, our signature thing or something like that? 
we again um, our internal philosophy or our um, um, reason why is we call it creating better results so creation coming first but always with an ongoing process to the result so we first think about what is the result the client wants to achieve and how can we create to achieve this result and this is where we are challenging ourselves is this really creating better results what we are delivering to our clients so we are coming slowly to the end of our discussion it was really interesting but my almost final question is can art generated by ai replace the best of human art events music if you want so um, the easy uh, answer is no. My father started out as a professional photographer. My smartphone can um, take brilliant pictures, but the pictures my father was taking with his phone looked way better than the pictures I'm taking with my phone. So, so yeah. So it's a, it's a it's just another tool. It's just another tool set where new stuff is coming up every single day. I'm actually speaking tomorrow on AI, so you're welcome to join. And I have to redo my presentation tonight because just last night stuff came out that I want to involve there. And it's another tool and it's about the people to master it and really use it to make the best out of it possible. The, this is my last question in a way. Um, when talking about AI, there's a lot of people that are afraid of it. People are afraid everything from, you know, AI will try to take over the world. Some view it as a tool, some view it as a helping hand. Some see it as a threat that it will endanger their working position because it will impact their working process. How do you see AI helping, if it's helping, or I, I assume it's going to be your answer, um, how do you see it actually making your agency's uh, work better? I believe AI, um, or to take it back, AI, you can focus either on the good parts or the bad parts. You have to be aware and um, take it into consideration, but I'll um, rather focus my energy on seeing what the good parts of AI, and it will transform our entire workflow and the entire workflow also in project management is a workflow there are lots of project management orientated organizations not just events and live marketing agencies have and we will see a lot of potential there in simple stuff taking meeting minutes um, summing up stuff finding dates together to meet up it's so much easier in these parts and we will we'll see this in all parts. So to sum it up, no, you will not lose your job through AI or the AI will not take over the job of an event manager, but event managers using AI will take the jobs from event managers not using AI because it's so much faster, so much more efficient, and at least to me, it's a lot more fun using AI. <laughs> That's a great answer. We usually finish off with a couple of short questions. So I will start and I will say, fire or ice? <laughs> ice. Day or night? Night. Uh, car or train? Car. And you can elaborate this if you want. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Beer or wine? That's a hard one now. <laughs> Depending on the day and time of the day, yeah. I would go for both. <laughs> Kulia Dams, thank you very much for taking your time and talking to us here at Ljubljana Talks, here at IMAX 2024. And um, thank you so much for these great inputs. And I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you for having me. Thank and you. We'll talk to you soon as well.